Hello everyone, welcome to the indie game, uh, the Indie 3 Showcase. We're going to be showcasing a whole bunch of awesome video games for you guys today. Uh, we have, uh, who do we have? We have Austin. Austin's here to help us. We are going to show a bunch of trailers. Uh, Y'all can hear me right? Everything sounded okay? Um, thank you guys for waiting, by the way. <laughs> that took about 20 minutes to get everything set up. Um, we're just basically like pulling trailers as fast as we can to get them set up for this. Um, everything's on the fly. So uh, we have Austin, and I are going to be your hosts for the next uh, couple hours of the showcase, and then we'll have uh, intermission. We'll have some more hosts come in, some more people to talk about these Indie 3 trailers. Um, we have a lot of amazing games, and so I can't wait to show them to you guys. Are we ready? Is Austin in to... Okay. Yeah, toss us in the main panel. I'm Boom. in the, uh, I'm there in the chat, are. but I'm not hearing you. There you are. I hear you, Austin. Yeah, yeah uh, we got kicked for being idle. <laughs> oh, we <laughs> Back we into the idle, idle channel, That's so fair. now we're That's back. Fair. Okay, so, uh, let's hit these trailers. Excellent. Let's watch some video games. Hello, I can't hear anybody. Can you hear me now? There we go. Yeah, I can hear That's you. That's what now. I there thought. You are. I thought that I was going to do that. Um, that was Bear Cowboy Games. Uh, that was Charlotte Seeker by Bear Cowboy Games. What did you think about that, Austin? That was a pretty hyped trailer for the very sorry, first sorry, trailer. Sorry, just uh, small audio problems. Um, yeah, no, that looked that looked really cool. Uh, I appreciate. I like the color palette. Um, you definitely see you got that indie twin stick twi uh, shooter vibe, right? Top down. Yeah, no kidding. And I always, uh, I always like, the, I, I always like those games that uh, added the mouse interface to that kind of top-down shooter mm -hmm. thing, where you could actually aim specifically at the stuff you want to see at. So I always like that interface a lot. Of, of I like the, uh, I like the kind of like the mixing of the uh, the chip tune and like the, but like it wasn't just like a regular chip tune style in the music. It was a little bit more chaotic and dissonant. Yep. I also saw those little bits where you kind of like go outside the game world and you like take damage for it. But it's like that was really cute, and I really, I really dig that kind of stuff as, as well. So that game just looks like a lot of high-paced, fast action, and you know, looks really exciting. Yeah, no, uh, Bear Cowboy put on some great work. Uh, I think one of the things that I really liked was that the uh, player character actually doesn't have a lot of animation to it, because when you're playing a roguelike, that's the last thing you're going to look at. Indeed. And so everything else is just super chaotic, but then it also brings you back like that you're not that important in this bigger world. So. Uh Oh, so this is going to have randomly generated like levels and stuff like that? Yep, yep, roguelike. I, I, I missed like the first stuff. 30 seconds of the trailer. I oh my to god, Austin, awesome. come on. <laughs> that happens, Sorry. it happens, it happens. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, do now, we have so, any uh, other information about platforms when this is, if this is released, websites? One second. 
because I believe Charlotte Seeker was on itch.io. If I want, uh, everyone, big ups to PC, Mac, Linux, PlayStation Vita. It's coming out. This is something that's coming out this year. And you can find Always more good. information at bearcowboy.com. Okay. So that was Bear Cowboy. It looks really good. Yep. Yep. That was that was way hype. Uh, just very first trailer. Uh, we've got a lot more stuff that it's coming up. And so let me hit you up with another trailer. And we're going to get some more information about some more indie devs. Uh, our next trailer is Lumo. Lumo, let's take a look. That was Gareth Numoy's, uh, sorry, it's on. Gareth. <laughs> Gareth. That looked great. Yeah, sorry, Gareth Noyce's Lumo. Uh, I'd, like, I'd like to floor on that for a little bit, if you yeah, don't mind. hit it. Hit me, Austin. Uh, I think the thing about that is that it looked, uh, I saw so much influence in it. I saw, well, I mean, obviously we saw that little section of like the pla of the whole thing just emerging as you walked on it and then disappearing as you walked away. So there's little bits of Bastion mm -hmm. in there. But there's also, you know, like the main character looks a little bit like Vivi from FF9. Yeah, right. Uh, the music had the music had like this nice kind of uh, this nice kind of like '90s. Uh, I don't even know what kind of to call that, but it's like this kind of ambientish dance atmosphere. And there was all kinds of stuff going in and on that trailer. And it was also the fact that it was like a lot of these concrete game design influences mm -hmm. in a game that looked really abstract. That angle it of was, Magicka, uh, the yeah. framing, the the cinematography of Magicka. Yeah, and really I liked cool. I liked I, I liked how so much of the screen actually was like stuff that's not technically part of the game world. It's just again very abstract. I, I'm really excited to play that. I hope it's got some gamepad support. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, I think I don't. What platform? I don't immediately have. No, wait, I do. I do. I've got info. What platforms are we getting that on? Let me just get this all set up right. Yep. <laughs> 
This is my first time doing a Indie E3 exhibition, so uh, PC, Mac, and Linux. It is now on Steam Greenlight, so you can go to. Uh, I, have, I have a link. I would. I want to like take this link and give it to you, uh, but we don't have an infrastructure for that. Right I forget away. how many things like uh, I forget how many like upvotes or whatever you need to get on Steam Greenlight for uh, your game to become ready. Twenty-two. Or... Twenty-two. No, no, not twenty-two. No. <laughs> Um, oh, okay, perfect. So, uh, no, you're totally spot on about that. Lumo, um, has all of these different, like, a conglomeration of contemporary influences. And that that's a really important part of, uh, hopefully a lot of the games that we're going to be seeing this, this weekend, this week, excuse me, um, at Indie 3. So, uh, I love that we have a lot of creators that are putting all the things that they love into one space. Um, and it's just, that's really cool. That's what this is all about. Um, we are setting up uh, new laptops because the last last trailer was kind of skippy a little bit. And so we want to try to set up a better laptop for you guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> like I've said, uh, the tech that we use and how we format all of our infrastructure on this side of things is going to get better as the stream goes on. And it's probably going to be... Uh, just over the next hour, it'll be like exponentially better. But then, uh, even as you get into like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you're gonna see a lot of really cool stuff, and it's just gonna keep getting better and better uh, as we learn all together how to put on a fan exhibition in uh, four days. So yeah, that was Lumo. Go vote for that on Steam Greenlight. Please that do. Success. Absolutely. Hopefully we can just flood the economy of uh, Steam Greenlight and just get a whole bunch of amazing games greenlit. Do you have okay, uh, so any comments on the chat side, Austin? I feel like you probably have the chat up in some way. I would love to get some interaction, get some thoughts on, on Lumo and on uh, Charlotte Seeker from chat. Uh, I had, anything. And someone said it looked particularly like a game they played a while. They said it was and subtle. Sorry, I keep forgetting to press the button. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, someone said it looks like Little King Story, which they Ooh, said was fun, challenging, yeah. imaginative, and subtle. I've never heard of the game. Yeah, I don't think we even acknowledged those uh, puzzle platformer uh, tropes and aesthetics to uh, what was going on in Lumo. So there was a lot of uh, thought put into not just the forms that they were taking inspiration from, but then what those shape into as the game plays out. I also liked how, as a game that's technically speaking uh, something of an action game, I mean, you know, being walking and jumping, et cetera, et cetera, it didn't mind being a little bit quiet as well. You know, it was just, it was yeah. like the entire atmosphere was kind of subdued in a lot of mm -hmm. ways. It wasn't trying to be so, the yeah. loudest. It was just trying to be itself. It, it was kind of like this, uh, you can tell that a designer, um, when a designer is taking a lot of inspiration from a lot of different places and they do it as a labor of love, um, where it's it's slow and it's paced and it's put together in such a, a subtle way where you can have like a minute long elevator scene that's just like you know what this is a nice place if that's an evangelion reference i will pay lots of money for this game <laughs> okay let's uh let's move on to the next game i would love to we are still setting a couple things up we just basically like oh, okay. uprooted an entire <laughs> laptop and was like get this out of here and we're trying to swap it in for a completely different laptop, and then that laptop decided, I'm not going to turn on. So that's wow. uh, a strange trailerless limbo that we are in right now. Uh, I wanted to hear any thoughts on Charlotte Seeker, though, from the chat, because that had some really cool stuff involved, too. And basically, we just started Indie 3 with uh, two games, one that was a roguelike, one that was a puzzle platformer. It was just like, this is, you know, this is actually really kind of too big... Uh, media forms or genres that are uh very contemporary very of the time and so that are like, and that are especially prominent in independent development right now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and some great examples of them which is also i find it interesting because i think a thing that happens in the independent development scene a lot is that um 
old genres that were not uh, that aren't so popular to develop in for AAA anymore uh, tend to reemerge in the independent development scene a little bit. Like we roguelikes haven't been a AAA genre for a very long time, or yeah. even like a PC AAA genre. And yeah. puzzle platformers were like hit their peak, kind of like in the like in their commercial peak, kind of like in the early two thousands with games like Ico. And, yep. uh, you know, Beyond 3D Good platforms, and... especially Beyond Good and Evil, that sort of thing. The sort of, Jack like, Dax, combination of Zelda and uh, combination of, like, Zelda and the emergent 3D platformer styles of, like, Super Mario Brothers and that sort of thing. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so, yeah, but it's it's always cool to see the styles reemerge like that. And uh, there's, obviously, I think there's tons of styles that we could also see reemerge mm-hmm. in independent development as well. You know what um, really fuels that? Game jams. Yeah. No kidding. You can find a game jam. There was just a Space Cowboy game jam. Uh, shout outs to all the people that were a part of that because they made some really cool stuff. Um, but there's been dating sim game jams. There's been uh, the F this jam was like, make a game in a genre that you don't like. And so it was like, you got to see a whole bunch of people uh, just putting thoughts out, just putting like ideas out and throwing it at the wall, seeing what sticks um, into entire genres. Just throwing their hat into the ring and uh is there I mean, they, there's a roguelike uh there's a seven day first person shooter game jam of course huge game jam thanks to and thanks to rpg maker there's been an entire renaissance of of, of games that are literally just i'm just going to make an old school rpg old school uh-huh. jrpg you know using, using rpg maker yep it's all and, about uh, platforms it's all about uh putting designing specific voices to be heard um and hopefully designing voices that don't usually get to be heard, which is what this whole kind of indie revolution has been about. So if you see, and, uh, if you're like, oh, another rogue, like, oh, another pl- puzzle platform, it's like, well, it wasn't like that a, a while ago. Yeah, exactly. And it's going to be something and, uh, new in a year. These things and I, uh, I've, I've been a little guilty of not developing, even though it's so easy now. But I mean, developing is getting easier and easier and easier. Mm-hmm. There are all kinds of engines and platforms that you can be developing on, and they're so easy to learn. I mean, I even have some basic game maker skills. I just haven't made a game because I'm terrible. Don't be Austin Howe. Go make a video game. Go <laughs> make a video game. You don't want to be Austin Howe. I, I promise. Okay. Uh, where are we at on <laughs> setup? Awesome. Are we going to have to pull up a whole bunch of trailers again? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, just hit me up with trailers as soon as you can. Woo! So do you have like a bottle of water off frame there or something? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, do like... I feel it. sorry for you having to look professional on that end. I will do my best because you guys are worth it. Because Indy 3 is worth it. Austin, I guess you're worth it, too. A thousand people have already said that you look fabulous, and you do. <laughs> thank you, guys. I, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, of course, I mean, I'm just an arbiter for all of you people. And um, as soon as we get the tech on our side as well, I'll be able to show a whole bunch more stuff. Uh, no, no, it's, it's not you, TJ. You're doing great. You're doing the best you can with what you've got. Love you, TJ. We, yeah. Basically, uh, if you haven't seen it, and I could actually probably show you guys if I want to break the illusion. Um, uh, Indy 3 HQ uh, is just... Don't, don't break the illusion. It's we work just very hard for three that illusion. people uh, <laughs> running around uh, one person on the stream. Uh, one person that... I mean, TJ's trying to set up all of the stuff that he has planned for his games that he's presenting, as well as hosting this. So, like, all the work that all the devs are doing is, like, compounded onto TJ, who is also the number one guy who set up Indy 3. Um, and then we have James, the voice of God over here. He is... Beware. Uh, he's running the stream and checking out uh, Hitbox chat and doing all of the things that he does over there. Uh, just so much stuff going on for just three guys. And yeah. not to send you all away, but remember, while you're waiting for us to set up more trailers and stuff, you could be watching somebody play a game on Indie 4 Absolutely. right now. You don't, you don't have Hitbox. to. It's not even TV sending away. Indie 4. It is. You have Hanan. Hanan Hammocks is hosting. Hey, guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on, I'm working on it. Hanan Hammocks is hosting uh, <laughs> Warp, Warp Door. <laughs> And, uh, no, and that's a hype show. That's a huge show. And there's some amazing games that are being shown there and games that are being played, so. 
Okay, we've got a trailer coming up. Yes, all right. Excellent. Me what are we watching? We're watching Hard Rain by Duncan That sounds Holby. cool. Hard Rain. Heart Rain or Hard Rain? I guess we're about to find out. Hard Rain. There we go. Uh, awesome. That was Hard Rain by... Um, oh, God. I have it on here. We had it on here, so sorry. We're still kind of in transition, but we have a really good setup now. Um, what did I... I said uh, Eric Holby, right? Don't Duncan Holby. That's what I said. Thank you. Um, Duncan Holby, uh, puzzle game. Puzzle game, and where can we find more information on that? Oh, cool. Google Store. Oh, right. So it's a, a mobile game. Hey, uh, people in chat are saying maybe we should turn up the uh, the trailer volumes in general because I've seen like three trailers in a row where people are saying. Okay. Little do they know, I already just did that. <laughs> thank nice. you. Thank you. And keep uh, keep giving suggestions on audio volumes. That's super helpful to us. And if I don't turn on my mic, just be like, get that guy out of here. Fake game, dude. You'd be right. Um, all right. Uh, any thoughts on puzzle game? On uh, <laughs> let's not just call. It, let's not reduce it to a simple puzzle game. <laughs> it's um, hard rain. Hard rain. It looked. It, it looked like a kind of relaxing, enjoyable experience. It didn't look like. Uh, I mean, at least from the trailer, we didn't get to see if it's like really mechanically intense. And of course, not every game needs to be mechanically intense. You know? No, no, you got TJ's that. TJ's made games uh, like that before. It reminded me of Solaris, actually. Yeah, no, of, of relaxing and very uh, kind of like juicy experience where it's like, oh, this this feels good, um, and that's a beautiful thing that we can actually show it in E three. Um, yeah, absolutely. So it looked like from the bits that I got that we have a lot of uh, what was the what was the mechanic that they were showing in there? Was that uh, was there like a ball dropping down and bouncing around like a pachinko kind of game i believe that the uh the way that like the the uh the way that the uh polygons or whatever the uh, mm -hmm. squares or whatever were like pointed i don't know shapes i'm not good um so the way that the things were pointed is kind of like how the little pellets were were like moving into certain spaces and the idea i think was supposed to be to collect them okay okay gotcha Maybe we, can, you know, maybe we can all look back at that later and, and, and rewatch it and make sure we saw more of what was yes. going on. Yes, all of these games uh, that we're looking at right now, we actually should be coming back to in more depth after this. This is just a, a quick showcase of all of the games in a, a short amount of time and concise as possible. And all of these trailers are on YouTube, right? Yep, all these trailers are on YouTube uh, because that's just where you got to go. So, uh, yeah, I mean, some of them want, might if, be if on Vimeo. If you want to see any of these trailers again, go ahead. Um. And I wish I could, I wish I could give you guys the links in chat, um, but we are we're working on that infrastructure. Because uh, we, we really need one more person here. <laughs> if that would be amazing. One more person. One more person. Just one more. Hey, open call to Seattle. One more person. Yeah, we will disclose to you the undisclosed location. Yeah, if anybody's in Seattle, Seattle and wants to help out with the broadcast. Um. Yeah, that actually be really really helpful. Hey, someone in chat is asking where they can find a list of the games and links. Yeah, uh, list of games and links. We're working on it, but uh, yeah, we'll get that to you soon enough. Okay. Okay, um, so we have a game plan. We do. Um, what we are going to do now, just to give us a little more time, a little more leeway, and make you guys watch more games, uh, we are going to play five trailers at once. Not at once, sorry. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> five players, five trailers in a row. 
so that we can kind of have a bigger conversation about he, all He's five. a madman. Somebody stop him. Okay. Am, I, up, am I coming in right now? You are. All right, it's it's TJ. So we're what it's we're gonna be boy. doing. It's it's your boy Tron Maximum. But uh, what we're doing right now is we're gonna get about five trailers set up for you guys to watch, which will also give uh, Solon and Austin plenty of stuff to talk about. While we also get stuff situated in the background. So as as usual, please be patient with us. We didn't exist four days ago, so we're working. We're working our asses off. All right, we love you. Love we you love guys. you so much. <laughs> Take that mic away from him. Uh, okay, hit us up with the trailer. Trailer number one. What is uh, our game for trailer number one? Oh, Bucket Man. Yeah, Bucket Man. Bucket Man. Bucket Man. Jumping cars, this is amazing. You know that everybody heard that, right? That was Bucket Man. Holy I crap. I that a lot. You get to run around in your own city. That was really cool. I, uh, I, re I really liked um, 
Yeah, I like the fact that it's like the levels are all just your own city, and that you know it's it's uh, all of the design comes from how the cars are, how the cars that you're jumping over are moving through the city, and uh, right. That's that that seems to be the thing I want. That that Pac-Man that's the thing I really city. like the most about it. I'm just going to say it over and over again about being able to take it into your city and be able to play a video game yeah. in your city. Like that's something I fantasized a lot about as a kid, like looking in at like at a room I was in or something, and just going, I wish there was like some kind of video game happening in here, like. Totally. There's um, what I was thinking about too with that same idea is that like you've got devs who are like, I want to represent the uh, streets of my own town, but I also want to allow other people to do that same thing with their own towns. And so it, it opens up a much wider discussion about like what laying out streets and <laughs> it's level design, right? It's level design inspired by the streets. It's level designed by Google Maps. It's awesome. Yeah. In, in one you, way, I bet you. I would. I would love to see the evolving discussion of like, oh, who has the hardest city in the game? You know, it's just like, oh, Paris is the hardest city. No way, man. It's London, Copenhagen, Everyone will agree. and everyone's going to be like, well, New York is really easy because it's just a grid. You know, like <laughs> Portland versus Seattle. It's finally laid out upon us. <laughs> no, that's that's legit. That's way rep, cool. Rep, rep in Baltimore hard against DC. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, uh, I want to see if, if I could get more information on that game. I'm going to try to. I also dug that the trailer style was literally, I also dug that the trailer style was literally just teaching us how to play the game. Sometimes that's all you need it to be. I have a whole bunch of things open right now. Uh Uh-oh. I have no idea what's going on on my screen over here. Um. Sorry, we've we're now spread out even farther and doing even more strange things, but we are we have the technology. We have the technology and we are probably I believe about a couple minutes away from just having like everything click into place. Just we we've been kind of like breaking and bending and bending and breaking and then eventually it'll just actually work and everything'll fix itself. Um but yeah, I I was gonna try to find more details on Bucket Man itself, um, and the designers, and I've I've looked up a lot of these beforehand. But there's so many games yeah. that I'm actually a little overwhelmed by uh, trying to remember all of every single one. Uh huh. Hey, there we go. We've got something happening now. Uh, can you scroll down on that just a little bit? Bucket Man coloring your city, and uh, that is free. That is free from the Google Play Store. You could get it right now. You can go get Bucket Man right now and play on your own city, and then we can finally be like, all right, DC is a little better than Baltimore. It is not. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so you can find more info at bucketman-game.com, and that's where you can hit them up. Um and the music was Bleeding Robots by Lights on Us. Cool. Cool. We're starting. We're almost there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, we've been setting up so many things in the last four days. Um, the physical stuff was coming together last night and over the entire night. So um, I'm just, I'm like running off of energy from you guys and the, the hype that you have are feeding into me. I am uh, running off of energy drinks from 7-Eleven. Oh, that that too. Just straight alchemical processes in our bloodstream. I am running off of an oven baked frozen pizza. Aw. Just like mom used to make. I, I <laughs> don't know how that applies there, but just go with it. Um we have another game though. Yay! We do games. Uh Hit Crush Two. No, that was Video the wrong one, T J. I don't I don't know what the concursion? Concursion Crush Two cool video games one uh, word that is crush 2 by um, arthur ward jr edible toaster oh edible toaster yeah edible toaster let's hit that up i think we should be hearing something
keep in mind a lot of the stuff the the stuff you say goes out live. All right, we got Crush 2. Crush 2 I, on uh, OS X. What was that? That was on Mac, PC, Linux. Uh, sorry, Mac, PC, Android. That was what I read there. Three um, words. Color blind mode. Right. Right. I actually, I, I haven't talked about it a lot, at least yet, but uh, I actually am red, green, color blind, and it, and it probably has affected me as a gamer in more ways than I can actually, in, in more ways than I actually realize. Um, but 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 be a but a but developer realizing that that color blindness does severely affect how we play games is is really nice. And plus, it looks really cool to have all those different shapes inside of there. I like that yeah. version of the game better. <laughs> that was really cool. That was what they added, wasn't it? It wasn't like a subtle color change. They actually like With, added an entirely new way to look at the game. That's yeah, pretty in depth. Be, uh, like subtle recolorings are something that's way more down the line, but a lot of developers are already taking the early steps of just being like, these are small things that we can do to make our game more playable to colorblind mm -hmm. people. And as a, as a colorblind person, I really, really, really appreciate it. It's a subtle thing, but it's so subtle that it affects you in ways you don't realize. And absolutely. so being able to play a game in a way that you absolutely know that it's not going to screw with you is amazing. So uh, that's one of Arthur Ward Jr.'s games. We actually have two on here of his also of course it just looks like a fun like tetra style game where you know the thing thing i notice is that you don't have to create lines you just have to create like groups kind of like a three uh, three of a color game yeah yeah i the thing that i really like is that uh that kind of falling block tetris style uh is well explored but it's a great way to like explore mathematics and design um and patterns and uh as a designer they're just really fun to make when you're yeah, like, absolutely. I've got I've got an angle that I want to take on Tetris or on the falling block kind of style of game, and it's it's just really cool. We get to see a lot of things like that. Um, similarly, it's the same thing that you can also do with the running the runner style games that are really popular. Uh, is it is also very similar, like a, a math problem that you can explore as, as a dev. Do we have a trailer for Flappy Bird? Uh, they didn't. Uh, they didn't really add one what with the whole it's not really a game anymore oh right that's that's so tragic it it all right kind of is but it's kind of cool story attached to it so there is, it I, is a cool story i'm, yeah. I'm cool with the legend of flappy bird in a weird way um, i'm always going to make sure that my phone that has flappy bird is ready uh, i want to, play to flappy bird. i want to hype up the other game that we have arthur ward jr is uh controyce k-o-n royce and that's on warp door so you can see that right on another channel, hitbox.tv backslash indie4. Um, that is something that they are going to be showing there during their showcase. So while we're not playing games, you can go over there. And then while they're not playing games, you can come over here. It's like, oh, everyone wins. Everyone has a great time watching video games. Um, once again, we do have everyone just going every direction. Uh, the last... One's the the last monitor that we plugged in didn't work, so now we're plugging in another monitor, and we had to fish out more boxes of monitors, <laughs> which is a huge testament to James's system is one of the most professional streaming systems that we have, and we are stressing it to the max by being like, hey, in uh, two days, can you put on an entire presentation for 1,100 people? Um, and... <laughs> do it in in one day um but he is one of the most professional streaming systems in the country if not the world uh and he has the technology for so many bizarre things 
to work and wiggle his way out of problems. Um, so we're setting up another completely different style of monitor for this one and using some different cables to fish a signal around to give me access to... Basically, we're building a battle station like around me as we speak. I've got a laptop on one side. I've got what you guys are seeing, the feed in front of me. And we're going to try to get the YouTube videos on the other side so we can just kind of swap between them back and forth rapid fire. Uh, that way there won't be as many of these long monologue breaks. Uh, but I want to talk more about Crush 2, and I want to talk more about... Uh, we just saw two uh, very retro-inspired games in a way that uh, was way way different from the contemporary-inspired games that we saw before that. Yeah, it's... Uh... Uh, Crush 2 is, I mean, it largely looks inspired by Tetris, of course, which I don't think the designer would be would be ashamed of saying. Oh, and of uh, uh, what what I found interesting about it, though, of course, was that it was what is was that it is a match of both the Tetris style of like of you know making groups and also mm -hmm. um, well, of of making shape, whereas right. and it's and it and it's match and it matches that to the of the more contemporary and more popular puzzle design of matching colors because mm -hmm. three to a color it became like the predominant like starting with the what was that game with the faces that everyone was playing like five, six years ago? Uh, before Bejeweled or? Before Bejeweled. It was uh, Snood? Yeah, it was Snood. Well done yeah, with so your I think, video I think, game I think, history, sir. Yeah, no, my, actually, believe it or not, my grandma plays a lot of games. Mm -hmm. I actually played Sid Meier's Pirates, the 2005 version, at her house the nice. first time I played it. Great game. And uh, But anyway, yeah, so she, she introduced my whole family to Snood. And so, yeah, I remember... No, around like 2005 or something. Mm -hmm. That's when uh, that's when like triple color as like the predominant style of puzzle game design became the thing. And so it's cool to see a game that's like taking both that style, which is the most predominant style of making puzzle games right now, and the uh, and the kind of Tetris style thing, which was which was like all of the big like uh, falling platform, falling uh, object stuff puzzle yeah. games from back in the day were all based on Tetris. There was Tetris, and then there was stuff like uh, Yoshi's Doctor, Cookie, Doctor Rob Dr. Mario, uh, Yoshi's thing, uh, Doctor Mario, Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, yep. et cetera, et cetera. All, all Tetris clones, essentially. All great too. In different. And ways. of course, that game, that game just looked really cool as well. Uh, we weren't. I wasn't hearing any music in that trailer, but I'm sure there's. I'm sure there's the great yeah. music to match that look too. Yeah, that could only be a, a failure on our side. I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. And who made that game? Um, I can get it. That was Edible Toaster. Um, yeah, I just want to say, we just want to apologize to Edible Toaster for, for not having the music when we showed that trailer. Uh, oh, there it goes. Okay, so I'm almost set up on this side. Thank you guys so much for bearing with us. We're doing it live! All right. Um, What do we have left? Oh, I also wanted to bring up the the one before it, Bucket Man, was Pac-Man inspired. And so we have multiple layers of inspiration happening in these games, and that's really, really cool. And also it's worth noting how that, like, just how the, uh, it's, it's kind of, in, it's kind of inspired by the Infinite Runner style as well, that Pac-Man, that the game that said it was inspired by Pac-Man. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's slightly a, com it's slightly a combination of Pac-Man and the Infinite Runner style. Absolutely. Matched together. Or at least, or at least Infinite Runner style gameplay was a huge part uh, of one of the modes of that game. Cause I know they said there's like that mode and there's also like various different sub modes as well. Yep. Just straight up, um, uh, straight up mathematics, two games in a row two cool looking games and um yeah you can find that at edible toaster.itch.io edible toaster.itch.io if you've never been to itch.io itch.io is a fantastic platform and amazing for game designers anyone can post to that platform and get uh if they sell their games there actually get better cuts than steam does so boom just saying uh yeah, let's jump into another trailer. We are now, I think, kicking it full steam. So I want to show you guys uh, Warden. Warden is by Cardboard Keep. And uh, they've got a really hype three-minute trailer that's just, like, super concise that I want to show you guys. So here it goes. Let's take a look.
Okay, yeah, we are working on the sound right now. Aha. Uh, uh -huh. The audio on the laptop was turned off. Sometimes it's the easy things. Technical difficulties, everyone. We're going to be formatting disk drive Eves before we can use it. Thank you for yes. understanding. Please, please, thank you for we're also let's, going to be... So let's go ahead and reshow this trailer yes, once we're set absolutely, up. absolutely, because uh, I don't think you can still hear the music. I can hear the music, and it's really, really great. I would love to play it again, actually. <laughs> Holy crap. Damn it. So blessed to be looking at games as just rad looking at these. Okay, yeah. I will I reiter reiterate that we are frantically working to get this fixed. Uh, we ended up having to do something that we had not completely tested in advance, and we're running short on monitors. So, <laughs> we will be just a moment. Go ahead, anytime. Hi, guys. We're going to be, uh, what are we doing, James? Oh, whoa. <laughs> you just threw in, uh, while we're also fighting the the losing battle of uh, sound, audio, video, technical difficulties. Uh, guys, we are going to show that trailer again. We just we added get, new art get... assets. Uh, was that from Angelo? Woo! Angelo just hit us up with also, some yeah, look at that. great overlays. <laughs> Slowly but surely. Uh, to be honest, we actually did intentionally design Monday to be like a, a showcase, but also like the gauntlet of like, let's get everything pounded out now, and then we can have five smooth days of sailing. Just doing it as we do it the right way. Yeah, we have all week, and that's why we have Austin here for the first day too. Just to get <laughs> it out of the way. I love you, Austin. Please. Oh <laughs> everyone's picking on me just because I did a bad thing last night. Oh, Austin. Everyone's picking on you because we all pick on you. It's just like high school. It's actually, you're actually still in high school. It's a living, waking nightmare. Teenage wasteland. Yeah. Don't go to high school, by the way. Uh, spoilers. Not so good. Get out of high school. You don't need that. Seriously. Get a GED. Get out of high school. Not go kidding. straight to college. And try to skip that as quick as possible too. Pro tips, pro tips from <laughs> pro tips from a university professor. Thank you. Get out of high school. Make video games. Pro tip from a university professor. Uh, get out of high school and just make let's plays of games. That's a legitimate industry that is not a hustle that hurts a lot of people. Totally normal. Totally normal. Carry on. Now we've got uh, panels about that actually that'll be coming up over the over the week, and <laughs> there's going to be some really cool panels on uh, let's plays and developer relationships, uh, streaming and developer relationships. We've got one on critical let's plays um, that is actually working with the game studies class that I work with at the University of Washington, and so that'll be coming live from UW, uh, which I'm really excited about hosting for you guys, um, but. Ah, I wanted I want to talk about Warden. I just feel like so invested in this game now because I saw the trailer and I got to hear the music and but you guys didn't get to hear the music and so it's like not a fair fight and ah oh, Warden. I don't even want to talk about the I don't want to talk about the game yet until we can I know. show the trailer. I again. want to show it in its in its, in ultimate, its full glory. Penultimate glory. It's beautiful 
style. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> it's got some flair and inspiration that I just really want to dig into, but I can't. Um, so I believe uh, we are still just plugging in sound stuff right now, trying to get sound to you guys. Um, right now we have uh, multiple inputs going into one computer. Uh, inputs from I think four different computers going into James's setup. So uh, getting the audio from every single one all lined up with all the all uh, audio from microphones um, and everything else. Do we have? Uh, so close, so close. We just plugged in some. By the way, don't forget, while everything is super awkward over here, you can be on Indie 4 watching people play games. Yes, yes. Indie 4, Hanan's stream, uh, fully set up and put together because she's just amazing at what she does. We told her to do that uh, about two hours beforehand, so huge props to Hanan Hammocks and uh, hit up her stuff at hitbox.tv backslash Hanan Hammocks uh, because she's just she's amazing. So uh, lots of love to her for helping out with Warped Door. Uh, and Chris Priestman's over there. Chris Priestman's awesome, too. So you've got just a lot of lot of cool stuff happening there. Um, in the meantime, uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go into it. I'm just going to go into it. That looked like Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Okay. Okay. I said it. I said it. <laughs> Warden looks like Legend of Zelda Wind actually, Waker. I was actually going to bring up, uh, there were some, and I hope I'm not insulting the developer by saying this because I actually really like this about it, mm -hmm. but, um, I liked how it was a combination of... Uh, I, I've seen a lot of people talking about, like, um, we want to see the reemergence of, like, low-poly 3D. Like, there's Thank been lots you. of, like, 8-bit revival, you. lots of 16-bit revival, and now and now people from my generation who grew up with the PlayStation 1 are like, all Dreamcast right, let's see, and... some, let's see some bad-looking models. <laughs> like, but they're not bad-looking. They're not. No, they're not bad. They're, they're not, not bad-looking bad looking looking. in that game at all. But, no, but... They uh, weren't bad-looking like, then let's... either. I swear to you. <laughs> Some of them. Any okay. Anyway, we'll so, agree so that liked, Solon has no idea what he's talking a, about. I liked how it was a combination of like a kind of like early like low poly 3D aesthetic mm -hmm. and kind of like the cell shading, which will be forever associated with Wind Waker, and also yeah, some like yeah. modern and also some like modern lighting, especially like near the end of the really trailer, we saw lighting. some gorgeous light coming in through a cliff that looked great. Yep, this is gonna be something. We're just gonna talk about Warden and then show it again. You're gonna be like, oh yes, that's what they were talking about. Um. For those who haven't, uh, I mean, it's it's not really fair to make uh, reductionist kinds of associations from one game to another if people haven't seen that game or know what it is, uh, because we do have a large audience. So um, Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker was uh, made in cel-shaded graphics as opposed to the rest of the Legend of Zelda um, group, and so it kind of stands out with that aesthetic. Um, and it comes through in a lot of other games, but um, it is that kind of cartoony, uh, soft feeling of the the graphics there. Um, it ended up being hugely influential in the generation in which it came out. Um, that too, despite despite the fact that games were slowly moving towards the neo realism aesthetic that is so dominant now in this generation. Yep. But that kind of like in that transitionary period of like uh, what a lot of people considered like the uncanny valley of 3D graphics, lots of games went for a kind of cell shaded aesthetic that helped cover up some of the less realistic things that we weren't at yet as it came up. As compared to now where people are just going for photorealism at all costs. Um, the other thing about it being that it was clearly inspired by some of like Zelda's, uh, you know, heads up design and all that sort of thing. Yeah. No, the, the, um, <laughs> The button prompts and the, yeah. the UI was very similar and inspired, which is... And, of course, cool. actually, I want to point this out. Uh, uh, you know, genres that become popular and unpopular, Zelda clones are not really a huge thing these days, either. I know that's like Zelda clone is something that, like, we got so used to hearing maybe five or ten years ago that even now we don't want to hear about it. But, like, that that genre kind of died of off. Darksiders. Yeah. Just and just kind of... game just kind of similar. Uh, I just got an announcement that uh, Glitch Riders is currently playing on Warp Door. So if you are, if you are not at Indie Four, Hitbox.tv backslash Indie Four, I recommend it because that's where I would be. I want to see Glitch Hikers right now 
that's my E3 highlight. So please go watch Hanan doing glitch hikers because that game looked so hot. It really does. I it also is low polygon. It's actually the exact same uh, style, different different aesthetic, but same same headspace of that low poly count uh, because it's more abstract, right? And it gives you more uh, more space to abstract expression from the plane, the faces of planes uh, in a double entendre of like the face of the plane and faces being very expressive. Um, nice. Thank you. Thank you. I come up with these on the fly. Uh, but yeah, no, like low poly aesthetic does a lot of great work. It does work for the player. It allows the pr player to be creative and express themselves um, in in interesting ways. And it's I think what I always liked about right? the low poly what I always liked about the low poly aesthetic, and this is what a lot of people said about the 8-bit era as well, is that is that it represented the objects it wanted to represent just well enough that you had an idea of what it was, but you still had to use your imagination to complete the picture. Yep. So I think that's that it's, it's kind of one thing is that is that low poly already uh, already gets people who are playing the game to look at it in a kind of critical way to interpret. Because mm -hmm. you actually have to interpret the world around you to correctly parse the game to play yep. the game even. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, <laughs> we just reset a lot of the computers. <laughs> That's what we're dealing with on this side. Um, yeah. Hopefully we'll have some more trailers coming up soon. But in the meantime... Uh, so we're going to keep talking about low poly and uh, Zelda? Hey, we could, honestly. Uh, there's a lot of history going on in just the last five. We've only shown five trailers, but like I feel like we've covered a lot of historical ground in just five trailers, uh, both representing uh, AAA and indie styles uh, all in one, and that's kind of cool. <laughs> I'm going to jump, really cool. this, I'm gonna jump in here for a second, guys. Oh, uh, so uh, it is the moment of truth. Uh, sometimes the answer is to turn it off and back on again. So. See if we can run a trailer and, and actually have it work now. Well, let's try running. Uh, let's try running uh, Warden again. I'm hearing audio. I'm right. hearing audio. Yeah, I heard it. Okay. All right. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good this time. Okay. Run it from the top. This is a completely different game. But this is Suppressive Fire's Blood Alloy. So we're going to get back to Warden. But first, Suppressive Fire's Blood Alloy. All right, cool. Fra uh, Frank Washburn's Blood Alloy? Okay, got that one right. No kidding. And uh, Frank Washburn's actually doing panels with us this week. Um, that sounds excellent. Hopefully we get to talk to him about that. And uh, So yeah, just uh, co going on the theme of, of, of combinations between between popular design styles and also uh, recombinations hey, with older... Build, build what you know, right? Exactly. Well, like, uh, you know, popular design style, popular design styles mixed with like older ones that that people wish were still around. Mm -hmm. um, I liked how that game was using um, using a very Super Metroid uh, inspired style of movement to combine it with a much more with a much more action based aesthetic. Yeah, I'm trying to remember uh, what's claw game, Bionic Commando. Just straight yeah, up, Bionic the Commando. The ways that it moves, the ways that it flows. This isn't even necessarily like the uh, uh, comparison of the aesthetic yet, but just like the ways that it's interacting with a 2D side-scrolling world around it, uh, hella inspired by Bionic Commando. Uh, it's just like uh, one of those things where you've got this platforming genre where you're like, all right, I'm, I'm jumping, I'm jumping, I'm jumping. 
but I don't necessarily, I'm kind of bored of being bound by gravity. So how do we change this? Um, so it's like, all right, we've got one where it's like, let's swing. Let's swing from the ceiling. This one's like, let's just grind on the ceiling. Let's just, let's just go all over the place and uh, explore the world in novel ways and then just and blow it up while we're doing it. <laughs> yup. Which... And, uh, and the way that they're using the camera to emphasize your movement is something that Zelani would be really into. Yeah. No, there's some really cool camera work being done in there those kind of subtle flares that you get in these indie games where they're exploring uh, the they're exploring the programs that they're uh, able to build with. And so you get cool things like the, the camera work in Blood Alloy um, and the sprite work in Blood Alloy 2 where it's kind of got these like blurs happening with the sprites. Uh, just gorgeous and well put together. Well, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh employed just like how it's used as well the execution well executed style <laughs> yeah no you're completely correct um what okay um do we have another game loaded up oh, I, let's let's show everybody warden again yes Don't forget please i need to show warden uh i'm being told that we're going to take a break at four which is in 17 minutes as far as my count goes, 16 minutes. Um, so let me get Warden up for you guys. And then while we're watching Warden, I can actually start grabbing a whole bunch more cool stuff. And we'll just start, we'll start rocking it, okay? I promise you, I'll make sure we get good 15 minutes straight. Uh, once I find Warden in the, the straight list of 150 games. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. Just to re-emphasize this point, we had over 150 games. I have no idea how many games are being shown at regular E3 right now, but I guarantee you, you're not going to see nearly as many brand new games, especially considering how many sequels are going to be shown at E3. All of this stuff, brand new. Brand new. Okay, so uh, CardboardKeep.com has Warden, and we are ready. Can you hit me, baby?
thank you. Uh, so that was Warden. That like right. I wanted to show you guys this music and uh, the whole presentation as it goes because it's freaking awesome. So excited for that. When's that coming out? Like I want to play that game. <laughs> um, it seems like that that is in development right now. Well, it looks like it's pretty well along. Yeah. I think it's starting to be where it wants to be, um, but I'm sure that during development they're going to want to uh, probably get away from some of the uh, uh, Wind Waker-like aesthetics that they were doing. I see, like, it's cool that they've got the uh, overlay, the UI, the way it is, kind of to be exactly like uh, the Wind Waker's UI. It's very, very similar, uh, but I don't feel like it's doing a lot of work for their designs for the game, and so... Um, I think there's probably a more elegant way they could put together their UI, uh, if they're, if they're interested in that kind of thing. Um, regardless though, the, the, the ideas and things that they've got together, uh, very hyper violent murder boy on an adventure to do a thing, um, looks <laughs> awesome. <laughs> like it looks cool. I'm, al I'm always looking to play as hyper violent murder boys on an adventure to do a thing. <laughs> yep. Um, I want to, uh, can you hit up the... I want to hear what people have to say in chat, if you don't mind. Because um, I want to hear a lot what... of people arguing about Wind Waker, honestly. <laughs> no, no, no. I want to, uh, Austin, if you could uh, make sure to quote some people in chat with their usernames, um, and if they've got any like thoughts or ideas on Warden as a game, not necessarily, not just Wind Waker, but also Warden and how Warden looks and feels. Uh, I would love to well, hear what they Well, Lucid Rapture. Guys. Lucid Rapture brought up a good point. He said that part of the reason that uh, the low poly S three D aesthetic uh, hasn't hasn't come in hasn't come in big yet is because three D modeling software costs a fortune. True. No, there are and cost limitations. And that's still completely true. I mean, as two D development gets two D development is becoming more and more accessible to the point where there are so you can develop depending on what your game you want it to you want to be, you can get the resources to make that game for free. Mm -hmm. Someone you hit know. me up with that quote, limitation is art and I'm don't remember who said it, but like, yeah, there's a lot of truth in that. Um, there's been a lot of push for uh, this idea. What is the art movement? I think it's called like the new aesthetic or some kind of pretentious thing where they're trying to reuse uh, 8 bit uh, aesthetic. Uh, but it's this like super pretentious movement called the new aesthetic. And because they're not limited, uh, with their art style, it's like kind of imploding on itself, and I'm kind of enjoying it. If you like hipstery uh, art movements imploding on themselves, check out the new aesthetic. Um, it's just called the new aesthetic. We already had this problem with modernism, okay? Uh -huh. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Wow. I've got porthole. I've got porthole, man. We don't have to do art critique today. Uh, let me hit up where uh let me give you all the details for this seek the depths this was a ludum dare competition this is for the 29th ludum dare and the theme was beneath the surface and so you're going to see a lot of that idea of beneath the surface uh but this is downloadable now at ragzokin uh dot itch.io backslash porthole um just look up porthole ludum dare 29 or ludum dare is probably the more easy way for you to google search it that's for Google search. It's it's Dare, but it's Ludum Dare. You'll find it easier that way. Um, but here you go. Uh, this is Porthole.
Okay, that was that was porthole, and that right there, that was my indie three. Like hashtag indie three, porthole from Ludum Dari twenty nine, uh, by Mark Wanacott. And I think they have a. Oh, I just opened Skype. Thanks, laptop. That's not going to mess things up. Um, oh, I wish I could. <laughs> Ragzokin.itch.io. I wish I could give you this link, but I cannot yet. Uh, hopefully after the break. Um, but yeah, uh, that was like straight up uh, indie E3. Uh, we actually can't. I can't debase this game by comparing it. Uh, slovenly to any other big titled video game like Porthole is all its own uh, it's got this very meditative feel to it you're under the sea um, it's non-violent which is it's, uh, abstractly a first um, always a fun thing yeah <laughs> it's we uh, a lot of our games have been some somewhere in that kind of violent range but this is like absolutely removed from it um but it's it's about exploring the ocean. It's about seeking the depths. Uh, it looks like you're going deeper. You're trying to submerge as deep as you can. Um, and look at stuff. This is inspired not by games, but by playful interactions of exploring the deeps of the ocean and just wanting to find cool stuff and finding uh, strange animals, creatures of the deep that are interacting with each other and you kind of get to have that like voyeuristic first look on what they're doing. It's like, oh, uh, hey crabs, what are you guys doing? Uh, are you guys having fun out here? <laughs> I'm gonna go this way now. Yeah, I like how it's just. I mean, that you know that game wasn't advertising any kind of objectives or win state either, and that's always great. Yeah. You know, you know what we need more clones of? We need more clones of LSD Dream Emulator. Just on that note, games with no win states, no objectives, just walk around and look at crazy crap. <laughs> Yeah, Porthole on itch.io. That's probably the best way you'll find this game, and it's free to download. Um, name your own price, and please name a price. Help indie developers get the get bread on their table, really. Um, but Porthole at itch.io. So you can Google that, and that'll probably be the easiest way to find it. Oh, um, sorry, I'm going to pull up one more game before we go to break. But I just opened Skype, and now Skype is like, I need you to look at me right now. So thanks. Yeah, Skype is like that. Thanks, Windows. There's a reason we're using Mumble. There's a reason we're using Mumble for all of our stuff. Uh, yeah, let me grab one more game. Any thoughts from the chat on, uh, Warden, on sorry, Portal? Porthole. <laughs> hole. Yeah, don't get chat started on Portal and Porthole. Give me some give me some critique. Uh comparing and contrasting portal to porthole. Please. Uh well portal has a win state. Uh it has characters. No, no, I don't want I don't want that basic stuff. No, get that out of there, Austin. <laughs> no. I mean like the the themes of portal being about portals and porthole being about portals. Or being about portholes in a way. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to read about. That's what I want to well, get into. Well, well, Portal, well. Portal was about game design based around portals. Portholes is based around the the narrative aesthetic experience of a porthole. There you go. Of there looking go. through the porthole in the bottom of a boat. There uh, you go. Speaking of boat, I've got a game called Boot. Boot Hill boot. Heroes. After an alleged attack by the Chepequick Indians, the people of Bronco Country are on the brink of war. What's up? Oh, are those free download codes for Crush 2 in the chat? Arthur Ward on Twitter. Oh, uh, what's his uh, Twitter handle? At, at Edible Toaster. Wow. So there are codes on uh, Twitter with Edible Toaster, at Edible Toaster, and he's just dropping Crush 2. Uh, I figure I figure if y'all go follow him, he'll probably just drop more codes just from the pressure. Like, you know, when you have, like, that falling block puzzle and you just, like, pressure out those bottom blocks? Just, just dogpile on Edible Toaster until he gives us more codes. Yeah. Communism. Ask, ask 
<laughs> don't actually spam him with like, give me more codes, please, please. No, like, tell him nice things about his game. If he yes. wants more money for his game, give him money for his game. Tell him, tell him really nice things about his game, and like really critical things about his game. That's what's super cool. Um, so I've got one more trailer before we go to break, and I've been having an absolute blast, even in spite of all the technical difficulties, just hosting all of you guys. Same here. Oh, Indie Jam starts in two minutes. Oh, then, uh, all right, I'm going to just play Boot Hill Heroes. The trailer, uh, they're at, on Steam, it's on Greenlight. Look up Boot Hill Heroes on Greenlight, and we are going to the Wild Wild West. Hit me, James. So that was Boot Hill Heroes by David Welch. That looked really interesting to me because, uh, well, frankly, if nothing else, one of the, uh, the, the main franchise that is known for combining the Western aesthetic with RPGs uh, that shall remain unnamed does it pretty poorly. But, uh, gotcha, gotcha. But I liked, but I liked, how, the, but I, I liked how that game looked. It, it really landed the aesthetic, like the fonts and all that that it was going for, lots of big numbers and that sort of thing. The music was fantastic. The sound font was straight up Super Nintendo, and it just sounded fantastic. It really so, did sound amazing. I think so that whoever, was probably what so stuck out to me. It, whoever's making this clearly has a really great understanding of the, and then of the soft, era of RPGs the that they're The soft pan towards. with the character looking over the burning village. I'm just like, oh my gosh, yeah. this is so dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not ready did for this. Did you also see that quote that got cut off, which is like, justice is just a lie told by men like you? And I'm like, damn, this sounds Jeez. awesome. Hardcore. I want to play this. I want to play this game. Um. So yeah. Yep. Uh. Oh, <laughs> Arthur Ward Jr. just did post two more codes for uh uh two. What is it? Not block two. Um. Uh, check for more for Yeah. All the devs are coming out. Um. So we're gonna go on break for about fifteen minutes and just keep banging out this stuff. Obviously, it's gotten a lot better in the last twenty minutes. Indie 3 Jam is coming up. Uh, we have Indie 3 Jam just started is the news that I've got to give you. Um, if you you want to be a part of this, like, uh, there's no excuses. Uh, Indie 3 Jam is real. You've got um, Game make Jolt. A video game. Game Jolt has got you all covered uh, on any kind of promotion uh, side of things that you want to do. Once you, you just upload it for whatever platform you want on Game Jolt. Done. Uh, game Maker Studio is free now. You can make a game in Game Maker Studio, and it's done. Like that's that's it. So, I want to send you guys there while we go on break, and then we're gonna be back in fifteen minutes. Alternatively, uh, no, no, Hitbox... no, 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 we're gonna be back in thirty minutes. Oh, thirty. Uh, exactly. uh, hitbox.tv backslash indie four is also going hyper with Hanan. Um, and then uh, yeah, so we've got links for that stuff in chat. I hope. And uh, Tron Maximum, TJ wants to jump in and say something real quick, so he's got one announcement. Okay. Awesome. All right. Big thank you to everybody who has like, continued to be incredibly cooperative with us while we get all this dumb crap situated. Um, 
Yeah, we're going to be taking a short break so we can get all our technical issues resolved. Indie 3 Jam just started, so if you're a game developer, you should definitely get on that. It's going to be today until the 14th, and then on the 15th, we're going to be demonstrating all the games. So if you want free publicity, just make a game in four days. It's, it's not even that hard. But no, seriously. Thank you all for being as for, like amazing as you have been. Your support has been incredible. And we're going to give you a lot more good stuff very soon. So just take a look at Indie 4 right now, and then we'll get back to you later. Thanks. Thank you so much. All right. Let's take a brief moment and kind of go over our schedule. Uh, we have... oh. Uh, that's not quite right. Uh, <laughs> the dangers of live code updates. But we've got an intermission right now, and then we'll be back with a trailer showcase, and then we will, yeah, proceed from there. Thank you for watching, everybody.